Hello, and welcome to the Power Within podcast. I'm your host, Lori. Today, I'm doing an episode on growing food. Growing food has become such a passion of passion of mine this past three years. And each year I get more and more excited about it. A lot of people ask me questions about things that I grow or things that I use or incorporate into my growing process. So I thought it would be really great to share with you guys an episode of some of the things that I grow, some of the the products that I use that I found most beneficial in my my health journey and and maybe give you guys in uh you know some something to get inspired by so that you go oh maybe I want to grow some food or I want to try this and that was my hope with this episode is to share some of that that information I talk about you know grow lights and regrowing food and uh, trees and how to how to grow all of these foods and really make the most of you know, taking care of your body and what you put into it. I really hope you enjoy the episode. So without further ado, I will get to it. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of the show today. Today I wanted to talk about gardening for New England people. It's right around the corner. Um, And in other places of the world may still be able to be gardening earlier. Uh, But I used to look at gardening as just a, you know, spring summer thing around here. And as I've gotten more into and more into being more self-reliant and dependent and into what I put into my body, I have learned that growing can be something that I do year round. So I wanted to share some stuff with you guys that I've learned about growing food. And maybe you guys can take some of the tips or or some of the things and and you know, apply them to your own lives. Uh, I think one of the big misconceptions is that you need a lot of land to grow food. And that's just not true. I don't have a huge yard. um, But I've gotten a good amount of food. Um, Last year was when I really stepped up my growing, not to the potential that I want to do this year. But I did grow quite a bit of food last year. And I've done growing boxes and then just sections of the yard. And it's worked out really, really well. So after the summer growing last year, I was like, well, I want to, you know, I'd really love to have more fresh food because realistically, I think everyone can agree when you eat good food, um, you can really feel in your body that you feel great. You feel energized. You feel, you know, full of life. And so... I wanted to do that year round. And I found a few things that really helped me with that. The first thing that I got this, I think it was, I want to say this winter, um, I went and I got an arrow garden. And so they have a variety of, it's essentially like an indoor light garden, and they grow in pods. And I started with the six seed or the six pod one. And I started growing my own herbs and my own lettuces indoors. And that has been amazing. It grows the most beautiful, um, like if you buy the pods that come with it, there's big uh, basil, thyme. Um, there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch of them. I've, I've really been growing a lot of basil and thyme because I love basil um, on all my salads and with my tomatoes and all that stuff. So I grow a lot of basil. And the lettuces, oh, they grow so fast. Um, Usually, I will put the seed pods in there. And within seven to 10 days, I have full, like the whole like top of the the arrow garden will be stuffed with lettuces of all different varieties. And it is so beautiful to go in and, you know, cut off my own fresh lettuce every day for my salads and my wraps. I love all of those. So I would highly recommend that. And it's also great because you can put it right on your counter. It doesn't take a lot of space. And there's different size ones. There's three pods or six pods. There's nine pods. And I think there might even be one that's bigger. They vary in in price. Um, And uh, I know the, the Arrow Garden website, they do specials sometimes too. But you can also find them at some of the retail stores. Um, 
that can help you save money too. If you, um, Kohl's, I believe sells them and they have coupons like, um, with their, they give discounts in their store. Plus it goes on sale. So you can get them for a really reasonable price. That's actually what I did when I discovered it. Cause I was shopping. I was like, Oh, well I can get this for great. And I got it for like half off. So I loved that. So I would recommend that as like kind of an easy growing, tri uh, um, tip for everyone. Cause you can just throw it right on your counter and have fresh lettuces and herbs to grow in there. There is pods so you can grow your own food. Um, and there's, I'm growing right now. I'd gotten the, it's a dwarf tomato plant. It's growing great. It's, it's amazing, but it's taking, um, quite a while. So, um, I just took it out actually and, and transplanted it into a pot to see if I can have better luck with it. Um, with the tomatoes turning, there's tons of tomatoes. There's tons of, um, the flowers coming for it. It's just, they haven't ripened as fast as I would hope, but it's, it's a great, 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 great thing. And then I really got into microgreens this year. Microgreens are so good for you and they're relatively pretty quick to grow. Um, I started buying them at our local farm and you buy a small container and it's, it's like, uh, I want to say I pay like $9 for them and I'll put them on my wraps or you can eat them as like a salad all on their own, but I prefer them to go on my wraps with my salad and my tomatoes and all that stuff for, for those. I did start buying some seeds and I, I was buying the, um, back to the roots. They had little containers that you could buy. Um, and they were like for two little, like, uh, there, there were like tiny little pots, um, it's like $13 and they grow pretty quick. It's about, it's about a week. Um, but the problem is, is that I was like, I'm going to spend a fortune on these microgreens if I'm buying them like that. And I found, I went online and I was looking to see, you know, which ones were rated good. And so I've tried a couple different companies for the microgreen seeds. And so I wanted to share my favorite. Uh, there's a company called True Leaf Market. And they have the best microgreen seeds that I have tried of all of them. And they're a really reasonable price. They have organic ones. They have, you know, uh, just the regular seeding. But their microgreens have grown so well. And I am so impressed with them. I just put out a huge tray of them. And I, um, I put the soil in and then I put the uh, the seeds on and I put the, you know, the little cover over it to kind of keep the humidity in and put it near my grow light. And I get massive trays of the microgreens within, usually within five days. And so I'm loving that because now I'm, I'm growing enough for each week. And then I chop them down and I already have the next set coming so that it's, it's a constant, um, replenishment of the microgreen seeds. So if you do like microgreen seeds, I would highly recommend you check out True Leaf Market. They're top quality seeds. They are delicious and they grow super fast and they ship super fast too. So I would definitely say give them a try if you want to um, do it. I have the, there's a salad kit one. It's a, it's a pretty decent sized bag and they have a variety of sizes that you can try just to see if you like them. So that's one of them. Um, I'm doing the microgreen broccolis, the amaranth, the um, radish, because I like a little bit of variety. And sometimes it's fun to see different colors in the in the microgreens while you eat. Um, I typically eat a lot of salads and wraps with with all salad parts in it. So I like a lot of color in my in my food. Um, so they are a definite company. I would say check out for microgreen seeds and you will not be disappointed. Um, grow lights. I, this year I was like, okay, I'm going to start all my, my, my seeds for the spring coming in early. And, but I was like, oh, I don't really have a grow light. So I went down to uh, my local Home Depot and I got a Ferry Morris grow light and it's been wonderful. So I put that around the trays. I bought, um, I bought their trays with the little, um, seeding parts. And I just went in and filled them with dirt and, you know, I've put in my seeds and that actually has helped so much. Like they're sprouting so quickly. Actually, some of them have started 
have sprouted a little bit too fast for me. So I have like buckets of um, <laughs> zucchinis and corn and, and all that stuff that that's going right now so that when the weather gets a little bit warmer, hopefully by the end of this month, I can transplant some of that stuff outdoors. So it'll grow really nicely for me in the, um, in the summertime. I want to have a good amount of crops because I planted, I want to say it was 70, 72 seeds. And so I, every single one of those has sprouted and they're either in buckets or there. And, I've, and then I'm going to start coming up here um, soon. I'm going to start my next 72 seeds because I want to, I want to keep growing them in batches so that I can have enough food for pretty much the whole entire summer. Um, not only that, but I juice, you know, I talked about uh, juicing in another episode, I juice every single week. So I would love to have a majority of my juicing needs that I, um, that I need coming from myself. So that was my goal this year. I've got, I think I already have, uh, I want to say 10 yellow pepper plants go going, um, because I love the, um, I call it my spicy summer one or whatever it is. And it's pineapple, pepper, carrots, and turmeric. So the um, peppers, I was like, I want to grow a whole bunch of those. So I've, I've got tons of those growing. So I do love all of the uh, variety. And I'm sure that, you know, any of your local stores, garden centers have, you know, uh, different grow lights. I'm just sharing with you guys what I found and the ones that I really am enjoying and have been working really well for me. I do typically try to, um, when I'm buying my seeds, I do typically try to buy organic seeds and heirloom seeds. I love the heirloom and that's seeds that have grown for um, the original plants. They haven't been you know, hybrids or anything like that. So I do typically try to um, buy the heirloom seeds. And I know like my local farm, they have some incredible um, heirloom tomatoes. So I will, when I buy those from them, I'll take the seeds and use those to grow my own as well. Um, something I noticed is that a lot of people when they buy organic seeds, they forget that um, they may want to use organic soils and fertilizers because that can contaminate your your seeding as well. So I do if I'm if I'm going to buy organic seeds, I'm very particular about making sure that I have organic soil to go with them and to have the organic fertilizers. Some of the seeds I buy are not organic and those ones, you know, I'm not as picky about the soil or whatever that I purchase. But I typically, I want to say 80% of what I grow, I do try to do from heirloom and, and organic seeds. So I do, if I'm going to spend the extra money to buy those seeds and to grow those things, um, I want to make sure that I'm using the correct soils and the correct fertilizers for those. So I do do that as well. Um... And something that I discovered last year was how easy it is to grow trees, like fruit trees. And I was like, oh, I want to do that because I, I, I have this massive peach tree out front and we get so much uh, peaches from them every year. I, I want to say I, I go out and pick like over 100 peaches and it's wonderful. And... I was like, I want to grow some more, but I'm like, I really don't have a lot of spots for trees to grow. And so I was doing some research and I saw online and people are like, you can grow lemon trees and, and, and other trees to bucket sizes. And um, my neighbor had told me that he's a, he works with a lot of landscaping and trees and stuff. And he's like, it only grow to the size of the bucket that you have. So if you want to, you know, have decent sized fruits and things like that, you know, put it in a, a decent sized bucket, but you can keep them indoors. And also New England, you know, probably isn't so great for trying to grow, you know, some of the tropical things and, and, and the other plants that may not thrive outdoors. So I do, I am growing some indoors though. So I, I started growing this year, or last year, a lemon tree and an avocado tree. And I did those from seeds. And I'm really impressed with how they're growing. I know, I think the lemon tree takes about two, two to three years to get lemons on and the avocado tree, I believe is five. But I, 
I was really excited to try it. I was like, oh, you know, I love them. So I'm going to, I'm going to try and grow some. And I, I tried a couple times unsuccessfully because I would put, I would just, you know, um, I would soak the seeds and then I'd just put them in the dirt and, you know, let them grow. Or one of the avocado um, seeds that they had said, I saw online, someone had said, oh, if you just peel off the outer layer and then put your toothpicks in it and put it in water, it'll grow. So I tried doing that for like months and nothing happened. So I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna try something different. So what I did for the seeds this time is I cleaned them off after I got them out of the fruit and I... um. I wet a paper towel and then I squeezed it out. So it was just damp, wrapped the seeds in them and put them in a plastic baggie for about a week. And when I opened the bag after a week, I saw that the seeds had split and they were now growing roots. So I was super excited about this. I was like, yes, this is what I want to do. And then what I did for the, the lemon one, I planted that one. So that one's growing very well. And then for the avocado one, I, then I put the toothpicks in and I put it over a jar of water um, where the um, where the root had started to come out. And it is doing incredible. I finally just transplanted it. I let it sit in that for like six or seven months. And, and I mean, it got a great root system going in the water, but I'm like, I, I want to put it in, you know, in a bucket. So now it's it's doing really well. And I have that growing. So if anyone wants to try giving a fruit tree a chance, you know, it's not something that you have to have outdoors. It's something that you can, you know, keep in the house or or things like that. So it's, I think it's great because it gives people that option of having, you know, fresh fruit in their home that they can grow that typically, if you live in climate that is not ideal to grow these things, you can still grow them and you can grow them successfully. That's what I'm doing. So I'm super excited about that. And then um, I started to learn about regrowing food from the scraps. And I've actually been doing this for a couple years now. And it works really well. I have tried <laughs> unsuccessfully uh, for three years now to grow celery. And I've tried every different way. I've tried all the different things. And I'll start to get the, it'll give me the pretty little flowering that comes, but I cannot grow the celery. So I was like, I need to do something. I need to figure out how to grow my celery. I go through obscene amounts of celery. Um, I do celery juicing and then I add celery into all of my juices pretty much. And I I use it in the healing broth that um, I make for all of my things from medical medium. So I typically use a batch of of celery a day. And so I saw online that you can do regrow food from scraps. So I gave it a try. And so I'll cut the celery. And then at the end, what I'll do is I'll put the bottom of the celery. Sometimes I'll like try it if it's like really thick, like sometimes I'll just cut a little layer off. And it will grow it'll grow, it'll regrow in the water. Now, um, I try not to put it like directly in like a the puddle of water because when I first started, I had some mishaps and it would start to grow, but it would get all mushy and gross and kind of rot the, the celery at the end if you put it in too much water. So I try to keep it a little bit elevated above the, above the water and you can do that with toothpicks or, you know, whatever you want to do. And I've had a lot of success with that. I'm really excited about that. I've got a bunch of celery we're growing right now. It doesn't take long and it's a great way to reuse your produce. So if you're if you are using a a vegetable, there's a variety of them that that do this. And I do it for um my lettuce. I do it for uh green onions and garlic. And it's they're all the same. You just, you know, you take the ends where the 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 root is submerge them or put them above a little bit of water, let that root grow in and you don't have to transplant them. I tried to transplant them and it didn't, that didn't work out too great. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I know some people have had some success with replanting them, but I typically just keep them above the water and they regrow and I can, I can reuse them. Great. Wonderful. So um, those are the three things I've had success doing it with. But I know that there's online, you can find a, 
a bunch of different ones and I'll um I'll see what I can find and put it in show notes if if I can find the the link to some of it. I know I've shared it with a few people before. Um I also do that with um cilantro and basil as I use those a lot in um in the recipes that I make. So the cilantro and basil you can just, you know, pluck off and from a sprig and they'll start to grow roots and then you can replant those. I have this I actually have a really big um, herb garden out front. And so I will typically grab my sprigs and try to regrow some of them so that I can get plants that grow faster. And so I do that. I do that quite a bit. And I grow um, out my herb garden. I've got sage, uh, cilantro, oregano, thyme, basil, um, Oh, there's a whole bunch. Um, but mint, I grow all that stuff. But you have to be careful too, because I didn't realize <laughs> when I started growing some of these herbs that some of them will take over. Like mint and the oregano, they spread like wildfire. And um, my oregano and sage, those come back every year. Uh, my basil, I've not been able to find one that comes back every year. So I just replant that each year. And now that I have the Aero garden grower indoors. I take that and um, and grow my herbs right in that, so it's it's constant fresh herbs. And anyone who who cooks, you know, a lot of foods at home, um, probably uses the herbs in a like instead of using a lot of salt and you know the processed things. I I try to use the herbs to flavor my food versus adding in butter or salt and pepper. I try to really get all the flavor from the ingredients versus adding in in those unnecessary ingredients. Of course, I do use them occasionally. <laughs> Not saying I don't, but I do I I do like to get the flavor from the foods themselves. And there's nothing like there's nothing like the the taste of your own grown food. Um last year I I experimented with a bunch of new food um, growing. And one of my favorite things to grow was corn on the cob. And I always, you know, uh, there's there's farmland not far from me. So I, I always love going down in the summer, you can see like, all the corn stalks. And I'm like, oh, you need a lot of land to, to grow corn. No, you don't. So I mean, you need space in between each plant. So what I did is I had you know, I kept like a, f I want to say like a foot in between each plant, but the corn was unbelievable. I did silver corn and the stalks grew. They were like 10 feet tall. Um, <laughs> so it lo it must look crazy to the neighbors with, with corn stalks growing over the fences like, like crazy, but it was so easy to grow. It grew so well. And then I took the corn stalks in the fall and I use them for decorations for all the fall decoration as well. But I loved growing corn on the cob and it was one of the easiest things to do. And, you know, you could probably even try um, uh, doing like, you know, one or two or three, you know, if you don't have like land, if you're in an apartment or something, if you have a like a porch, put some on a, uh, in a bucket and I'm sure it would grow because it... It was wonderful. Uh, that was my favorite thing that I added last year. I was like, wow, this grows really, really well. Um, I added on last year watermelons. Um, I had like vines, those. I grew those too close, though. So I, I learned this year how much space I need for those. Um, but I love growing the food, the tomatoes, you know, walking by and grabbing a fresh tomato off of your you know, your plants in the summer. There's nothing like having, you know, um, you can get some little mozzarella balls and fresh tomatoes and fresh basil, mixing those up with a little bit of olive oil or whatever, you know, um, even just eating them just plain. Oh, it is, it is so beautiful. And I love that freshness of the food. And even, I try to incorporate now, I had asked uh, the vet if it was okay, because my dog, he likes to run by and try and steal all the vegetables. And, <laughs> and I was like, is it okay if he eats all those? And they're like, yeah, just, you know, be careful. Um, but I have, um, I try to make the most of the space. I have a, um, a wild blueberry bush that's out front. And this year I added um, 
a raspberry bush that I have. It's growing indoors right now until it's you know warm enough for me to place it outside. Um, I have the peach tree. I have the lemon tree. I have the avocado tree I'm growing. Um, I have a variety of seeds I'm going to and you have to make sure that you look though because not everything's spring and some things take a long time to grow um I did try Brussels sprouts and um and broccoli and um red cabbage and those take a long time so I know now like if I'm going to start those for the you know for them to be ready in the fall I'm probably going to plant them a little bit earlier this year just so that I have enough time to have all of those so I definitely would say you know make sure you know the growing times and and when to have things but it's it's relatively easy to grow you can do pots you can do raised beds you can put it right in the ground um herb gardens are you know they grow with relatively minimal maintenance and they grow fantastic. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you're someone who uses a lot of herbs, basil, cilantro, uh, parsley, all those things, have them have like a little herb garden or, you know, get like a a planter and put them on your porch so that you can go out and do that or or get like a indoor grower so that you can have the fresh um, herbs because there's nothing like having those fresh herbs. And I use mass quantities of them. So I do have, like I said, I do have the big, huge herb garden out front because I typically, (laughs) I typically go through a lot of herbs, um, an extreme amount of herbs, because that's what I use for flavoring all of my foods. So I just wanted to share some of my tips and tricks and um, some of my favorite things to grow with you guys. And how simple it is. So I would recommend that this year, you know, even if you can't grow a lot, or you feel like you're someone who kills every plant you touch, because that's how I was. And once I started getting into it, I realized how easy it was. And another thing that I do with the uh, with the plants and the herbs is if I notice that maybe they're a little bit like wilted or, or things like that, people will laugh. But I will go and talk to them and be like, how are you doing today? You know, you're such a good little plant. You're going to grow well. And um, on my podcast with Cindy Busby, we talked about that as well. You know, and she was like, oh, it's growing well. You know, we I, I, I go and talk to it. And it really does help. I know that that may sound silly to some people, but it really does help when you keep that positivity and talk to your plants and make them feel good and they grow quicker, they grow better, you know, just like human beings. If you're positive and you and you grow them with love and positivity and kindness, we all grow better. So my takeaway for this is let's all grow together. Let's grow our minds, our health, our food, Let's grow everything together and let's do it in a great way. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope that you're going to give growing some food a try. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to help out as much as I can. I appreciate you guys tuning in for another episode. Have a great day. Thank you all so much for tuning in, listening to another episode. I I love growing food. It's It's so wonderful and... I hope that you guys liked that. I hope that there was some beneficial information in there and you guys learned something new or want to try something new. If um, you have any questions about anything that I mentioned, I'm going to put some um, some information about the products and, and the things that I loved that I mentioned in the show notes so you can find anything there. Um, if you want to leave a comment, if you have any questions, if you know, I'll try and answer anything that I can. You know, of course, none of this is is health and, you know, health advising. You know, I'm just sharing with you guys what I love and what's helped me and what I find beneficial. And I do want to take a moment to, I really want to say thank you to everyone for listening to this podcast and for sharing your feedback with me publicly and privately. I... <laughs> I've been really overwhelmed with the amount of support and the people who really have shared with me that, you know, something helped them or 
that they were going through something and, and to hear me talk about it and know that they weren't alone. Uh, it was really important to them because they never would have thought that I was feeling the same way that they were by how, you know, positive I was. So I want to say that um, that means so much to me. And my goal with this podcast has always been, even if only one person is listening to this show and it helps just one person, that's a, that to me is a success. That to me is why I did this and why I want to do this and why I continue to do this because I'm I'm happy with just helping a couple people I'm happy with just a couple people tuning in and loving this I'm open to constructive criticism and feedback as well Um, I understand that this may not be everyone's cup of tea and not everyone's gonna like it and that's okay too you know I want everyone to find things that they love and enjoy and you know, um, find it, find a different podcast if it's not something that you love and enjoy. But if you do, and you are tuning in and you are listening, I want to say thank you. I really want to say thank you. And the support has meant so much to me. It is really, it has really humbled me and made me feel so honored that people care enough to listen and support my journey. And I want to do the same for all of you guys. So really thank you um i i hope that you guys know how heartfelt and meaningful this is to me and thank you for your support um yeah so that's all that i want to say and um i'm working on my next episodes and i've got some guests that inspire me so i hope that you'll continue to listen thank you and have a great day